you have to fight. That has always been the story. There's a battle going on right now to decide how our civil liberties and our constitutional protections apply to this new place, the internet. We're just at the beginning of a long process of translating offline rights and laws into the online world. What does the First Amendment mean? What does the Fourth Amendment mean? How does our Constitution work in the space where it's never been applied before? There's a great risk that personal privacy is uh, subject to the whims of a few companies. We have the right as American citizens to have this sort of free and open communication, to share what we think, what we feel, what we've created. And I think that's a huge part of our culture. We have to make sure that good questions are asked in every public forum of the people who purport to represent us about what we care about, about the internet. Any kind of freedom, any kind of rights we've ever had in this world have only come because we fought for them. If we were in Europe, we'd be marching in the streets over this. My fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Let me assert my firm belief that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. Free at last! Free at last! Thank God Almighty! We are free at last! So the First Amendment is this classic guarantee of free speech, that however crazy your ideas are, however weird your thoughts are, even if you just want to say something you don't even believe, but just think it's interesting, that's protected. On the internet, I think the First Amendment takes on an even more important role, because if you think about how computers work, they're not like people. They don't understand what it is they're saying. Laws about the content of speech, which traditionally have been prohibited by the First Amendment, they're almost impossible to execute on the computer, right? A computer can't look at this and say, is this offensive? You know, a computer can't look at something and say, does this upset the government? There's been a habit, actually, of handing over information to law enforcement with very little process. The danger here is that we make laws that are so restrictive, they prevent people from doing original things. They prevent people from having new ideas, new expressions, and new inventions. So if you have laws saying that kind of speech is illegal, it makes it impossible for the internet to work, right? Dozens of copies are made just in the most inconsequential task. And if every time the computer has to stop and say, huh, is this illegal? The internet would fall apart. It would just be impossible to do. The whole critical importance of the internet is the way it enables creativity, the way it enables uh, inventiveness and innovation. Right now, we have very old-fashioned statutes in the United States that don't adequately take into account what the internet is or what it's capable of. And frankly, we have a lot of people on Capitol Hill who don't understand what the internet is. The sad fact is we don't live in utopia. We live in a world where Facebook can use this data to spy on you, you know, they sell it to advertisers and future employers. There's all sorts of bad consequences that can happen by handing over every detail of your life to a private company and giving up your rights to it. It should be a slam dunk that the policy of the, uh, of the government is to do the maximum possible to protect privacy. But what we are seeing develop now is just the uh, possibility of wholesale invasions of privacy to the extent that everybody knows where you're going, what you're visiting, and you're going to have no private life of your own. Cell phone companies are turning over millions of records on their subscribers to law enforcement with very little process. This should call for uproar from the populace. It's really fun to check in on Foursquare and say, oh, here, I'm at this bar. But you do that enough, and you can start to draw a picture of exactly where you are all day, right? Of where you've gone and where you've been. All of this stuff that seems innocuous individually can be put together in a pretty terrifying profile of you. The reality is today that there's an automatic dossier on each and every one of us ready to be compiled. If we have no way of knowing when power is abused and holding that abuse accountable, then democracy is on pretty shaky ground, I should say. But when you're telling Facebook, Facebook is bound by law to tell the government. You know, in many cases, they don't even need a court order to get your data. They can just call up Facebook and say, look, we're a law enforcement agency, we need to see this, right? It's not this private conversation between you and the server. 
suddenly it's this much more public conversation between you and everyone who has a lawyer. <laughs> Every time you post something, think about it, is there anybody in the world that you wouldn't want to see this? You've got to get involved. It's amazing how few real people, real voters have to show up and tell their member of Congress, this is important for a member of Congress to care. We have to have a good national discussion. We have to have legislation. We have to have... Uh, Federal Communications Commission, the Federal Trade Commission are working to protect privacy, but they have to have that strong push from the Congress and the legislation uh, enactment. In every part of America, internet policy should be part of the debate, part of the election process for every single congressional representative. And we have to make this an election issue. Without making an election issue, the people on the Hill are never gonna, you're never gonna respond to us. You have to fight. That has always been the story.